I am not a happy meal right now. As part of our ongoing series into the sad history of McDonald's Happy Meal toys, we've shown you some of the most terrible ideas that have ever existed. Unfortunately, there are still so many more that just can't be forgotten. A Happy Meal is supposed to make you happy, not sad. Needless to say, these toys really missed the mark. Here are the top 10 saddest McDonald's Happy Meal toys ever, part three. Why don't you just say it? I'm the worst toy maker in the world. Batman Returns Toys. You didn't invite me, so I crashed! In the early 90s, back before superhero and comic book-based movies dominated Hollywood cinema, Tim Burton released Batman Returns. It was the second Batman film in what would become a growing franchise, predating any Avengers blockbusters. The film featured Michael Keaton returning for his role as the caped crusader, Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman, and Danny DeVito as the Penguin. At the time, McDonald's wanted in on the franchise action and planned their Happy Meal toys to coincide with the film's launch. The toys themselves were little cartoon-style versions of the film's characters, each in their own little cars. Maybe this is a bad time to mention this, but my license is expired! Catwoman's purple car even had a little tail sticking out. The problem with the Batman Returns toys wasn't that they weren't fun, it was the fact that they were based on a movie that wasn't appropriate for the young children for whom the Happy Meals are designed. Circus is back with a freak show. May not be suitable for kids. Burton himself is known for his love of dark themes and imagery, so that's not really a surprise. However, after releasing the toys, McDonald's faced a huge backlash once parents realized the contents of the movie itself. Batman Returns was contested with audiences because it had a lot of gross, somewhat disturbing, and violent scenes. It also came with a PG-13 rating. This rating is well above the 1 to 10 year old age range that Happy Meals are marketing. To. Sky dancers. I'm a dancer. You're a dancer? She's a dancer. Back in the 90s, Sky Dancers were a really popular toy. In fact, they were so popular, they even created an animated TV show based on the toys. If you remember, Sky Dancers were little plastic fairies with long wings that sit on top of a plastic base. When launched, the dolls would spin into the air using the wings to propel them. Naturally, McDonald's wanted to capitalize on this super popular trend, so they created their own version to include as the girl toys in their Happy Meals. Little girls likely got really excited when they found them lurking under their fries and burgers. However, the Happy Meal version was made from cheap materials that didn't hold up to the real thing. The dancers never really stood on the base properly, which meant they really didn't work that well. You are a piece of garbage. Sky dancers were notorious for being dangerous. The way that the toy was designed meant that the fairies flew in unpredictable. This unpredictable flying pattern resulted in a lot of injuries. Come on, it's pretty. Pretty? That thing is a death machine. Foam tickle feathers. Tickle, 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 tickle. Stop it! The Tickle Feather Sponge was released in 1982, in the early days of basic Happy Meal toys. It was essentially just a piece of foam in the shape of a feather meant for kids to randomly tickle their friends. But according to marketing, only if they were sponge-worthy. What does sponge-worthy even mean? So you think you're sponge-worthy? Yes, I think I'm sponge-worthy. I think I'm very sponge-worthy. Chances are, this toy probably ended up annoying parents more than it provided any entertainment to children. This this was utterly useless, and quite frankly, strange. Ultimately, the only practical use for this odd tickle sponge is soaking up the tears of disappointed children who were expecting something fun in their Happy Meal. Excuse my surprise, but really, what a disappointment. Nickelodeon Game Gadgets we understand that you like gadgets. Back before Disney cornered the market on kids' entertainment, Nickelodeon was the dominating force on TV. For 90s kids, Nickelodeon was the ultimate in after-school programming, giving us classic hits like Hey Arnold, The Rugrats, Ren and Stimpy, and so many more. So naturally, everyone wanted a piece of that commercialization. McDonald's partnered with Nickelodeon to release Nickelodeon Game Gadgets in Happy Meals in 1992. It's a match made in heaven. 
These were basically just plastic advertisements disguised as toys. The game gadgets included the following toys. Applause paws, which were plastic pieces that clapped together. Loud mouth mic, which was some type of microphone. Blimp game, which was a plastic blimp toy representing the Nickelodeon blimp that did basically nothing. Gotcha gusher squirter, a tiny water gun that barely held enough water to spray someone. And squirt blimp, for children under three. Three. Their only real use was to promote Nickelodeon, and these toys didn't really provide much actual use for playing. That's a damn shame. Popoids. What even is that? In the 80s, toys that let you build things provided hours of entertainment for children. Popoids were toys sold as a set with lots of little parts that kids could use to build little people or weird creatures. They could basically take the bendy parts and pop them onto plastic blocks and bases. It's fun for the whole family. McDonald's Popoids would come with a specific set that made a small object. The problem with these toys wasn't really that they weren't any fun, but that they were dangerous. <laughs> Many kids at the time ended up getting their lips caught or pinched between the parts. Today, it'd be hard for McDonald's to get these approved without any legal ramifications because of the choking hazard they pose. While Popoids do still exist as its own brand, the McDonald's version wasn't as safe. This is the sweetest choking hazard anyone's ever given me. Food Fundamentals We're going back to work on fundamentals! The Food Fundamentals were a collection of plastic food creatures that had arms, legs, and faces. Millie was a little milk carton holding a set of dumbbells in her hands. Slugger was a juicy piece of steak with sunglasses. Otis was a little whole wheat sandwich with a blue baseball helmet. Ruby was a little red apple who, for some reason, was winking. <sighs> Winking, real mature. And holding a tennis ball and racket. Duncan was an ear of corn who wore a basketball outfit and held what's supposed to be a basketball in his hand. When you opened them to pull out their hands and legs, they had little notepads inside shaped like their particular food representation. This was yet another failed attempt by McDonald's to hypocritically promote healthy eating. While kids were munching down on their large doses of sodium, trans fats, and calories, they could play with figures figures of healthy foods that weren't sold at McDonald's restaurants. Each toy also came with a little pamphlet that talked about healthy eating, provided tips about exercising, and had various little activities like word puzzles based on healthy food themes. While kids may have gotten some entertainment out of these toys, McDonald's really has no business promoting healthy lifestyles to children while simultaneously serving them greasy burgers and processed chicken nuggets. Does anyone else here see a double standard? Ninjago Camera Viewer. Time to get down and dirt ninja style. In 2017, to coincide with the release of the Lego Ninjago movie, McDonald's released a series of Happy Meal toys based on the ninja theme. There were six in total, including a secret message stick that you could hold up to a special paper to read hidden symbols, and a locked journal. But one of them in particular was not much fun, the Camera Viewer. This was a plastic green camera with a dragon on the front and and the Ninjago movie title on the back. While it seems like a cool idea in theory, all it actually did was show you stills of the Ninjago movie. What a lame gift. Unless you really, really loved the movie and wanted to watch still images of it over and over again, there weren't really many uses for this toy after the first time. This toy was kind of a nod to the classic Viewmaster toys that were popular in the late 80s and early 90s. These were fun way back before virtual reality and 3D movies were a big and easily accessed commodity. At the time, this was an exciting new technology people hadn't seen before. But now, with so many advancements out there, kids these days just aren't excited by this type of thing. Even the original Viewmasters now use virtual reality imaging to stay on top of the digital trends. With just one reel of eight specific images, the fun here was pretty limited and boring. Bored. What? Bored! Space Rescue Toys. So what, you are a rescue mission? Yes. Sometime in the 90s, McDonald's released a series of space rescue toys and their Happy Meals. They were designed to make kids feel like they were going on a space rescue mission, although we're not really sure what they were supposed to be saving. Congratulations, you are being rescued. Please do not resist. 
On the surface, they looked cool. They were odd-shaped gadgets designed to be futuristic looking, which is always a fun theme for anyone. What kid doesn't love a good space adventure? However, there's a right way to do a space toy, and then there's a wrong way. McDonald's chose the wrong way, unfortunately. These toys didn't go over well because they were too complicated to actually use. The neon drawing pad was the only one that was relatively easy to figure out. But because it was cheaply made, it didn't wipe completely clean. It was only good for a certain amount of uses before you could barely draw anything. What a hunk of junk. <laughs> Letterland, Postcards, and Stationery. Oh, it's like a postcard from the real world. In the late 70s, 80s, and early 90s, McDonald's marketing was deeply embedded in their fantasy world, McDonaldland. This fantasy world was where all of their fictional characters lived, like the Hamburglar and Ronald McDonald. Many of the Happy Meal toys featured the McDonaldland characters, and the McDonaldland theme provided the basis for a lot of the items in the McDonald's play places. For example, kids could climb inside a jail shaped like a Big Mac. In the mid-70s, a toy company called Remco released a line of McDonaldland action figures, along with Letterland-themed stationery and postcards. Uh, Peter, I think that's just a piece of paper. Although technically not a Happy Meal toy, as these were sold in stores, the character-themed toys may have been pretty cool, but the stationery edition definitely was not. First, postcards are not a toy. What little kid is using stationery anyway? No kid needs that unless they're sending their grandmother a postcard telling them how much fun they're having at McDonald's down the street. Then to make things worse, you had to go out and buy a stamp separately. That means you had to spend more money on a toy you already paid money to get. Talk about highway robbery. Mick D's gendered Spider-Man toys. I'm not a girl's toy, I'm not. <laughs> Why do you guys keep saying that? It's common knowledge that McDonald's has gendered toys. The franchise offers girl toys and boy toys that are usually two completely different things. This strict gendering of toys has garnered controversy among customers, so in 2014, McDonald's decided to switch things up. For the release of the movie The Amazing Spider-Man 2, the restaurant put out a line of Spider-Man-based toys and announced that they would be for both boys and girls. However, when the line of toys was actually released, they were still gendered. Can't you do anything right? The set for boys featured action figures of Spider-Man, a Spider-Man-themed car, a tin of trading cards, and more, all in the traditional Spider-Man color palette of red and blue. The half of the collection that was meant for girls featured a Spider-Man-themed purse, headbands, and bracelets, along with a tin filled with heart stickers. Even though McDonald's tried to say that girls can like superheroes too, it still made the unnecessary divide between the boys and the girls' toys, and made it seem like the girls are only able to like traditionally feminine things. That's just disrespectful. Stay right here and click on one of our other great videos. And if you're new to our channel, then smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to join our notification squad.